Enchanté, Vankers. Just lick the stamp and send it, Vankers. No. 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 Daniel Ricciardo. We should just do the whole podcast in in, in our butchered Australian accent. <laughs> How dare they do that to him? Not let him have his his moment of glory on afterwards, and everyone hugs him like Sebastian Vettel, isn't it? That's wow. fucking something. Hey, I don't know if that's good or Australian, but it's definitely something. It's something. It's it's not how you normally speak. It, <laughs> a for effort. That's right. It's definitely different. De- <laughs> it's definitely different from the way I normally speak. <laughs> that's that's what you say after each audition. It's different from how I normally it, am. It's different from how I normally am. So how about that? <laughs> oh, Vankas, it's uh, you know I'm excited to do this episode because it's been the tough couple years for our first boyfriend. Yeah, you know the guy who. We lost our virginities too, who we just had like a great time with. He was just like, he talked us through it. He was nice. He w- like was just like a great, what a great first time we had with this guy. So this is something that I think, this is a quote that I feel about like my, our fan of Daniel Ricardo. Yes. And like kind of maybe encapsulates him a little bit for like the new DTS fans that got in on him. Right. From it's uh, I know one commenter said, like, can you stop with the cultural references that I don't have nothing to do with DTS? Um, eat my ass. OK. <laughs> yeah, what I have to say to you, this is from Tony Soprano in the pilot. Oh, yeah. An Italian, just like Daniel Ricardo. That's right. It's it's good to be in on something from the ground floor. I came too late for that. And I know. But lately, I'm getting the feeling that I came in at the end. The best is over. Now, the problem for us is. We were sort of introduced to Daniel Ricardo kind of at like at the end. Right. Like we kind of caught like him at the fucking at the downturn where it was like where his when his fame exploded. Yes. The the downturn was beginning. Like yeah. when he made the leap to Renault. That was when his fame fucking exploded. Yeah. And we so we missed the years when he we we heard a lot about it. like he's like your fucking cool uncle. Like, oh dude, back in high school, your uncle. <laughs> Was right, the fucking shit. This guy was the shit. And also, when you when we reviewed his career, we realized he got in at the wrong time. He oh. fucking he's he missed it. He missed it by this much. He was a fucking pubic hair away <laughs> from being a WDC. At least totally. one or two. Yeah. He he just wrong draft class. Wrong Sometimes draft you know- class. <laughs> life's all about timing timing is really huge in life you know when you get hot is important i mean this podcast we started this podcast kind of before (laughs) anyone was doing f1 podcasts in america and we you know i think maybe that's why people you know we just got in early it's good to be in on something from the ground floor for your ground floor (laughs) that's what tony surprised daniel ricardo came in at the end of an era yeah. Which is your, when we get into it, he came in right at the fucking end. Right at the, like, he came in at the fucking, at this cuspy sort of, he yes. was at the end of Vettel, beginning of Verstappen, fucking purgatorial nowhere is where he came right. in. And it just, he got fucking fucked. <laughs> but he was really good. He was, he was really, really good. good. He was really he, good. So we, we're going to do a deep dive on our man, Danny Rick. We're going to talk about his career, where, you know, what was it all about? What do we take from it? All of it. But this is the Red Flags brought to you by BetMGM. Daniel Ricardo. Let's just start here. The kid's Italian. <laughs> he's a t- like, he's from Australia, but the Italian roots go. The, his father's name is Giuseppe. <laughs> <laughs> yep. A lot of Italians in Australia. People sleep on that. I uh I knew I had a friend who I went to one acting class one time and I knew a girl who was Australian and Italian and her dad was like an Italian opera singer who lived in Australia. 
Right. They got a real Italian, which is the most Italian thing you could be as an opera singer totally. and a race car driver. Yeah. So, and his mom is, 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 you know, I think his dad came over to, uh, came to Australia when he was seven. Okay. Um, but his mom has Italian roots as well. So it goes both ways. The kid's fully Italian and he's just a little bit too charming for Ferrari, which we will get into that comes later. But yeah, he's, he's Whew. born, he is born to Giuseppe Joe <laughs> Ricardo. <laughs> Joey and Rick. Joey Rick. <laughs> He's fun. Hey, Joey. Joey Rick. And Grace Pulitano. Oh, but it, there's an accent on the O, so maybe it's Pulitano. Grace so, Pulitano. So he could be made he could be a made guy. He's not like Robert De Niro on Goodfellas where he's half Irish. He could be made. He could be fully made. They chose not to, um, which I am, am mad about to some extent. They, yes. they chose a Frenchman. It's like the it's the Irishman, but it's really yeah. the Frenchman. Yeah. And it's about Charles Leclerc. Um, but yeah, he's born in Australia. His parents are like he's middle class. He's not like he doesn't come from a ton of money. His father wanted to be a racer. And he actually went to Europe for a little bit to like have his go and it just like it just was, was never really meant to be he just like didn't have the money which is kind of like am i going over there to really try or just like to say that i did it to like check it off check it off the box um and yeah danny got into it they, they didn't want him to do it originally they wanted him to do like soccer other sports less expensive maybe less <laughs> dangerous but he you know he grew up around it because his dad would compete in like kind of local you know car racing and Carding and that kind of thing. His dad owns a uh, owns a. Uh, yeah, what business are they in? Ricardo Earth Moving. So he, it's like a construction. It's like an engineering. He's construction in construction, company. like Tony Soprano. He's in. He's a made guy. Yeah, he's in construction. <laughs> Wait, Ricardo Waste Management business. Okay. Yeah. Ricardo Waste um, Management. Yeah, it's called Ricardo Earth Moving. You can go to <laughs> Ricardo dot com. Dot au and you can you know check out they've got a phone number <laughs> you can see what projects they've worked on but it doesn't seem like it's like some huge crazy like crazy money making endeavor and uh yeah he was doing the carding thing for a while but he, i wasn't really taking it that seriously like am i really gonna do am i really doing this but then when he's around you but know he won, but he won yeah. he won some national carding thing yes when he was in Australia. Yes. And then at he, 16 in 2005, he entered his first open wheel series in the Western Australia formula Ford in a very old car compared to his competitors. Um, it was 15, 15 years you know, older, 15 year old chassis. And he took it to P eight. Um, so he impressed enough people that he wound up doing the formula BMW. B, sorry, the formula BMW, championship in 2006 he was on scholarship for that season and he won two races on his way to finishing third overall which landed him a red bull academy spot you know what i find interesting though it's like yeah i didn't i had just assumed he didn't come from, i just assumed that daniel ricardo came from money because he never talked about not coming from money right you know right, right right because it's like guys like esteban ocon are like i didn't come from shit I came yeah, from nothing. Yeah, yeah. And you assume that guys who don't come from much yeah. will say they didn't come from much. But – and the guys who, who, who are rich as fuck just don't talk about it. But the fact that he didn't come from much and didn't talk about it is kind of interesting. I'm sure, his, I'm sure his, he was comfortable, but for motorsport standards – his family was not writ his family did not have the money to to pay for his career. He had to get money from other people. Right. And I guess the only the only time his parents got him a car was a car that was fucking 15 years old. <laughs> Which is hilarious. Yeah, I mean, I think he I heard him talk on on in an interview talking about how like it was starting to get more exp like when you're a kid it's it's cheaper and then it's like it's all for fun and then like there was a time where like after a race, he just, he didn't really send it. He didn't really go for it. He's, and his dad afterwards was like, just like, dude, I'm, this is, this doesn't come for free. Like I am, I'm trying to build a business. 
I'm spending the time on the weekends. I'm spending a shit ton of money for you to do this. Like, are you are are we humans or are we fucking dancers, baby? Like, what are we doing? <laughs> anyway, so then, yeah, he makes his way. He gets a spot at the Red Bull Academy. I think he he talked about that. That was kind of at the time. The Red Bull Academy was a place where you could really move up the ranks, which maybe it, it, it's funny because at the time he, he moved right through that Red Bull Academy and then there was a plug in it and it, in, it was in the shape of Daniel Ricardo's face and nose. <laughs> and now that plug, we'll see if the, if the if the stream continues to stream after this. But um, then he's in the, you know, Red Bull's now sponsoring him. He does the 2007 Formula Renault. He classified in 14 races, races on his way to win sixth. He but he, was, he uh, beat the shit out of his teammates. He finished beat sixth, but he beat his, beat his teammates, which was important. Yeah. And then, then in 2008 he, he, was a big year for him. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So this, is, this is when people started to really fucking take, take note. In 2008, he does the Formula Renault 2.0. Weck finished first, won eight out of 15 races. So this is when it starts that people are, like, taking notice of this, this, this young kid from, from Italy. I mean, from Australia. Then he does the Euro Cup, Formula Renault, gets second behind Valtteri Bottas. He got six wins. Valtteri only got five. Valtteri only beat him by three points. So he's like now rubbing elbows with his future competitors. 2009, British Formula 3, finished first, wins Formula 3 by a dominant 275 to the second place was 188. He won seven of the 20 races. And uh, yeah, so he wins, he wins British Formula 3. It then does 2010 Formula Renault 3.5, finished second behind. I'm not even going to attempt to say this guy's name. Mikhail Aleshin with a beat of 138 to 136. Won but four more races importantly, he beat, he, he lost the championship, but he beat Vern and Brendan Hartley, which were both Red Bull Academy drivers. So that was right. big for him, beating yes. the other guys in the academy. And then in 2011, he does Formula Renault 3.5, finished season fifth behind behind Eric Verne, Rossi, and two others. Oh, Alex, he, he, he lost Alexander Rossi. He only raced three out of the 17 races, though. Yes. So. Um, and then this is when, okay, then it's like, okay, you've been doing all this shit. You've been, doing, you know, you've been in the wings. We've been prepping you. They do a preseason test with all the Red Bull drivers. Everyone comes out and they all, this is our flock of kids. Who's going to be the one? And uh, Ricardo topped the timing sheets. And there, that was kind of like the big, like, yeah, you were doing all this stuff, but like now we're actually going to put you in, in the machinery and see what you can do. And as we know, it's like sometimes you can hack it in the lower formulas. You look good in the lower, for, lower formulas and you actually get in the, that step up to F1 and like, can you, can you do it? Can you hack it? Ricardo does, but they don't put him in. But they don't put him in Toro Rosso. This was interesting. They put him in this team called HRT, right? Which was even worse than <laughs> Haas at its worst. Yeah, they were like so laughably bad. There are pictures of of the HRT that said like that they didn't even have sponsors. What they would write on the car was like, "Your name here, cool advertising space." Like they would advertise <laughs> ad space on right, the right. car because they didn't have any yeah. fucking sponsors. So this was a really bad team. Right. So, yeah, I mean, um, but he, really yeah, he gets to see. see he's on loan. Yeah. He's on loan as, as, as Red Bull is wont to do. And as these teams sometimes do, who was on, who was in Toro Rosso that year? Oh, it was, it was Sebastian Buemi and Jamie Algusari. Um, Sebastian Buemi's the guy who had that when the two tires just blew off of his car. That like crazy clip. Anyway, I feel he's, like he's, he's a Formula he's there. E guy now, Buemi. Yeah, he might be. Um, so he does that. He has I think the highest he finished was like 17th or 18th in HRT, but they were that was a year where there was like 23 or 24 cars on the grid. And uh 2012, he gets the call up to Toro Rosso. This is where it starts to begin. Um in Bahrain, he was up in sixth, and then he had contact with another driver, which landed him in 15th. Um, yeah, so 2012, he's, he's finally in Toro Rosso. It's, they were kind of nowhere, they, but he, he actually lost to Vern this season. He had 10 points. Vern had 16 points. So the next year, he beats Vern 20 to 13. So this is when, 
And then this is I when uh, they Red Bull parts ways with Mister Mark Webber, who is go who comes into play later in his life, and right. he gets in there. This is after he the Red Bull dominance. Mark Webber. He replaces Mark Webber, comes in 2014, and this is when he's it's new kid on the block. And this is but, when the legend of Daniel Ricardo was born. But 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 we have to remember where he's coming in. Yeah. Red Bull has just won four championships. Right. Vettel has just won four in a row, and he's the new kid on the block entering the number one team. He is he yes. is George Russell. George Russell. He is. Yes. I don't know if 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 Kimmy if Kimmy Antonelli was jo- joining Red Bull or like you know like if right. they actually had a hot prospect, which yeah. they don't now. It's like Red Bull then was like re- how Red Bull is now, you know, or how Red right. Bull was last year. Top of the game, the shit, unbeatable. Yeah. And then he the year he comes in they had the Renault engines just take a nosedive. <sighs> So that was his bad timing, which is he jumps he jumps a year too late. Yeah. Vankas, as you know, we have teamed up with BetMGM this season, and we are using BetMGM lines to make all of our picks. And if you haven't signed up for BetMGM yet, use bonus code DADDY, and you will get up to $1,500 first bet offer on your first wager with BetMGM. Here is how it works. You download the BetMGM app, and you sign up using the bonus code DADDY, because we're fun. Deposit at least $10 and place your first wager on any game. You'll receive up to $1,500 in bonus bets if your bet loses. Just make sure that you use the bonus code DADDY when you sign up. Don't forget, if you haven't signed up for BetMGM yet, use bonus code DADDY and get your first $1,500 first bet offer today. See BetMGM.com for terms. 21 and over. U.S. promotional offers not available in New York, Nevada, Ontario, or Puerto Rico. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Available in the U.S. Call 877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY for New York. Call 1-800-NEXT-STEP for Arizona. 1-800-327-5050 for Massachusetts. 1-800-BETS-OFF for Indiana. 1-800-981-0023 for Puerto Rico. First bet offer for new customers only. Subject to eligibility requirements. Rewards are non-withdrawable bonus bets that expire in seven days. In partnership with Kansas Crossing Casino and Hotel. Don't forget, if you haven't signed up for BetMGM yet, use bonus code DADDY and get your $1,500 first bet offer today. Now back to the show. He's plagued by the Renault engine. And not, but not in 2014, because 2014, but it, like, later. But 2014, he has this completely epic season. Yeah, he beats Every, Vettel, but he's he, but, he dominates but, Vettel. But he he finishes but, 238 points. Vettel's 167, like he, a dominant performance. Right, but imagine if the Red Bull was good. Imagine if Red Bull had kept their form, and right. res- then then he would have been world champion. Now Vettel fans would argue. That maybe Vettel was doing what He's Lewis tanking. Hamilton sometimes does, or Fernando Alonso sometimes might do, or insert great driver that is like, oh, I can't win with this thing. I'm maybe going to check out. Right. Um, real conspiracy theorists think that there are sort of <laughs> out clauses, out clauses that Vettel like tanked on purpose. Who knows? <laughs> we do know that Daniel put in a hell of a performance in that in that Red Bull and. Yeah. If the Red Bull had stayed at the, if if Daniel Ricciardo had entered in into a more competitive Red Bull, he might have been yeah. in a in a he might have won a world championship. Totally. No, he was. You're right. He was just hot at the wrong time. But that first year, he wins. They, he won three races. So he comes in his first year on the team. He wins first. He he wins three races that year. Had his first podium in Spain. Fernando Alonso sending praise to him. He described him as an unbelievable, very, very smart, and very respectful about Ricardo. And I think what's also, and this is kind of where, you know, in this world, and I've been thinking about Ricardo of like his charm and how kind of rare that is in this sport. Like his exuberance, his like, he really kind of embodies what, like if your if your brain wants to like come up with like a cartoon character in the good way of like what the racing drive like what's he like and he's oh he's living his dreams and look how exciting he's got that big you know million dollar smile and this is where and on top of it he's dom- he just beat the shit out of the th- four time reigning champion 
And then it's like, so stock is at an all-time high here. This kid, and the other this thing you learn kid, about him is that he's very, and even even when he was at his worst, he, yeah. this guy rarely, this guy, you never see him spin, you never see him crash into anybody, mm-hmm. you never see him do a like all his dive bombs seem to be pulled off, like right. He's never trading paint with people. There's there's a consistency to him mm-hmm. that's really impressive, and and I think that. Um, you know, I think that that I think a lot of drivers saw that. And I think what to 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 speak to your point is, I think what makes Daniel so relatable is like he behaves like we think we'd behave if we were right. like rich and famous and handsome race car drivers. Yes, yes. You know, it's like he behaves how we imagine we behave. It's like right. It's like when you see, when you see, you know, that's why people don't understand people like. That's why Chapel Roan gets all this shit, right? Because it's like people don't uh-huh. get it. People don't really right. un- people don't understand. It's like, wait a minute, you're rich, you're f- fam- like, you 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 be- people like it's like you see her on TikTok. There's like these old clips of her. She's be- she's been trying to make it for so long. She's like yeah. singing with her godlike yeah. voice at like some Iowa State, State Fair. Fair for yeah. nine yeah. people. Yeah. Like right, she, right, right. she wasn't like an overnight. I mean, she was an overnight success in that it, like it happened overnight. Right. But she had been grinding for years, yeah. and now she's gotten the the thing, and she's like, "Fuck off! I hate all of you. Suck my dick. I'm <laughs> I'm fucking so depressed." And it really yeah. confuses people because it's like right. they can't really wrap their head around. Yes. You know, getting everything you all, always wanted is sometimes a blessing and is sometimes a curse. Yeah. And um. So Daniel Ricardo like actually conforms to how we think we'd behave in these situations. Right. Whereas like guys like Robert Downey Jr. never did. Yeah. Um, there's lots of famous people that, that are like, what the, what's the deal with this person? They're so rich. They're so famous. They're so handsome. Right. Yet they're like shoving paparazzi cameras and like, you know, yeah, it, yeah, it, yeah. It, it, he, he really is how you'd imagine you'd be if you were rich and famous. But the truth is probably – most of us would eventually get tired of it just, mm-hmm. but he really is on all the time. It's really like we've met him. Yeah. Like, and he's really nice to us, shook our hand, made small talk with us. Like right. before the cameras were on, after the cameras were off, he like hung out with us and then his team like whisked him away. And right. it was a great moment where he, he hadn't said goodbye to our producer, Jenny. And he was like, oh, shit, Jenny. Goodbye, Jenny. Goodbye. It's this. Yeah. It's, it, it's like he's so much more. Um, he's so he he big times people so much less. Like, I forget people's names immediately. Right. And I am so much less important than <laughs> Daniel Ricardo. I know. It's and I'm like, crazy. what right do I have to forget somebody's name when Daniel Ricardo remembers everyone's? It's like you hear yeah. this about Tom Cruise, right? I once yeah. walked into a. Um, I was do, I was shooting a movie. My the one shooting a movie. I was shooting the one movie I've ever done in Utah. Yeah. And I asked, like, I went to the production office. I said, "Who is the coolest person in the?" And before I even got the word out, this, this person said, "Tom Cruise came in here, came in here at the beginning of the shoot, introduced himself to everybody. Two months later, walked in, said goodbye to everybody." Hadn't been in there in two months. Knew right. everybody's name. Remembered right. everybody's name. <laughs> two months later, shook everybody's hand. It's like, right. um, but it makes you it makes you really question. I think Brian, what's actually like? It makes me sort of mm-hmm. think like, you know, to quote Tony Soprano again. I find I have to be the sad clown, laughing on the outside, crying on the inside. Right. What is this shadow self there? Is is where is the shadow yeah. self? I think I was thinking about this too. I think that he has an innate ability to kind of brighten up the world, brighten up rooms, like he engages with people and people like really I think are charmed by him. Oh my god, you know. And then, and then, 
you get on like the public stage and now it, all this thing that like I was in rooms doing this and this is you, you start to associate with like this is my value. This is what I have to offer. And I think in certain ways, maybe that's true. But then when it turns or it's like, is that really sometimes like what you innately have to offer isn't necessarily what you want to we all come across in ways uh, these are usually negative we come across in ways that we don't want to i would like it if i came across it, it, it differently sometimes i think there might be a curse to like everyone fucking loves me <laughs> there's this great line and um there was this great moment in uh in uh love island where this one guy chris had like four women who were like interested in him and, and he was just and he was just miserable he was just completely miserable and he's just like it because he's just is spoiled with choice and he's no he's he's no he's gonna let people down and hit at one point he just goes every bird in this villa wants me <laughs> and he's just like he's so depressed about it i think that maybe daniel has like a little bit of that but in 2014 he's on the high right like he's he's fulfilling the dream i mean kind of the red bull obviously wasn't where it was but he he's the kid he's the guy he's the young talent he's getting wins he's knocking off four-time champion sebastian vettel so it's all kind of like going according it's all to ahead him. of him it's all ahead of him right and and that and that's sort of the problem is like yeah. it's easy to be the fun loving happy-go-lucky yes. guy when it's all ahead of you and he's and now it seems like he's stuck in sad clown mode a little bit it, you mean like 2024 yeah now he's sad yes. clown. right right because right, right. he's now put himself in this like i but i don't think it's really an act in the sense like i really do like i've like i've no, seen no. him like i do think he's an extra i do think he draws energy from people i don't think it's an act but i do think it maybe is a little bit of a burden yeah because it's like <clears throat> I think it comes from a genuine place. He's not putting on airs by being like charming and laughing and making jokes and whatever, but like he's not Ellen kind of... DeGeneres. Right. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> he's, That's right. He's not a, he, he actually enjoys people. Right. It, there's it's when the cameras turn off, it's not all of a sudden he like completely drops it and he starts yelling for a coffee. You know what I mean? Like he's <laughs> no. like, by the way, we've seen him ask for things and he's very nice about it. Totally. Yeah, but honestly, so, like not a, a scintilla of the same amount. But like we have what we do on this podcast isn't necessarily fully how we act in polite society. So like it's it it comes speak, from a real speak part for yourself. <laughs> it comes from a real part of our personality. But like I remember I was doing the pod once, and and I, when I was doing that play in New York, and one of my castmates was like in the room next to me, and she was like what the fuck was that <laughs> she was like she's like you're doing a full character you're doing like a full thing because i'm like What's up? you know what i mean that's yeah. not but it comes from a real place but then when we meet fans and we're like at one of the races or whatever it's like we kind of know how to pop into red flags mode you know what i mean i feel like i won't name the actor but i feel like um there was this pretty famous actor that another actor said she, she went up to her and was like I really love this like neurotic thing that you're doing on this show where you're doing this, you're playing this neurotic fucking character. And um, it's like really interesting, like how you put that on. And she's like, what are you, what are you, what are you talking about? What do you mean neurotic? But, and then, then she realized like, Oh my God, that she's not acting. This is just who she is. Right. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, I think it's interesting. His persona. Yeah. in in the upswing was, powerful it was potent it it it, it uh it seduced all of us i think yeah so that's 2014 so he's new kid on the block he dominates vettel wins all these races people talk about like that was he was really like that was his he was the best driver you know that year you know who could be not to bring him into this yes who who do Randall i think Norris. Lando Norris, he he is well, well, giving. Yeah, I, he's we giving will, Lando Norris. Well, not right now. He was yeah. Now, so then we get to 2015, right? Yeah. We'll get to the Lando of it all because it, it come 2016, 2017, 18 is when the Lando current current Lando responds to Daniel 2017, 2018. But 2014 happens. 2015 comes in and they're it's they're they suck. They're even the, the the engines are shit. They're not 
competitive, no wins. I don't think he even maybe got any podiums that that season, but he did do the Top Gear <laughs> thing. That was incredible. Where they in on Top Gear, they do this thing where they put race car drivers in just reason, reasonably priced cars and they have them do a lap and they time them. And Ricardo did this on top. And, and to some people, this is like, actually, you get them in the same machinery and who is the best. But Ricardo has the best time beating Hamilton, Mark Webber, Vettel, Rubens Barrichello. He beat all of them. And so just to and say, just to give you and just to give you better. some perspective, like Lewis Hamilton was the at, was the best. So it's like, yeah, it wasn't like Barrichello was the best. It was like it, you felt like there was some legitimacy to it because because Hamilton was the best. Right, 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 right. right. And, yeah, so uh, he's coming in and he's like making weight. He's doing like he's he's got at least some press. This guy's better than Lewis Hamilton. Yeah, this is the this is the next. He's the chosen one. This kid's legit, and and you want to believe it because he's got the thousand. You know, what is it? What is it? Million dollar smile. What is it? thousand watt smile? Yeah. What's the phrase? Thousand watt. Who smile? gives a anyway, shit? We you know he's what got we the mean. powerful smile, and um, but yeah, he had to uh, replace his power unit multiple times. But we you forgot the big thing. Well, not a big thing, but Vettel leaves and Kvyat. Right. in. Yes, and he's battling Kvyat. Right. But, and Kvyat actually beats him in the points. Yes. People don't remember that Kvyat was hot. He was a hot property. He came in, he beat Daniel Ricciardo. Now, Daniel Ricciardo had more power unit issues. He, he had like nine power unit issues replaced. Yes. Yeah. Uh, more, more retirements than Kvyat. But that was, um, he had 92 points and finished eighth, and, and uh, Kvyat had 95. But, right. That was a wobble. That was the first wobble in his career. Right. Um, but And then Max is coming through. Yeah, so then 2016 happens. They're starting to sour on Kvyat. Kvyat dives in, in China. Then he has a, they, he tangles again in Russia. Um, I think he... And they were like, all right, we're fucking... We're but done I, with think, I think they would have given him a longer leash. It's just that they had Max coming through. Yes. So then... Yeah, so then... It, the golden boy is then there's a new golden boy in town and he's not charming and he doesn't smile and he's yeah, like the anti he's, Danny. He's the anti Danny. Yeah. But he's got the fucking pace and his name is Max Verstappen and we all know the kind of story there. They replace Kvyat with Max, which you know, we you know, the Kelly PK of it all, but that's for another episode. <laughs> he Wins in Barcelona in his first race with Red Bull. and But there's also, like, in that race, Danny kind of felt fucked over by strategy in that race. He was like, I could have won that Barcelona race. So then immediately there's a seed of, like, this kid got better strategy than me. Right. And maybe won. In his first race in, he wins, and maybe there's a leaning – there's at least the hint that there's a leaning – slightly in his direction from the right. powers that be still a great year for him still is a great year um when finishes third yep i mean think about it if they had had the car in 2016 he's the world champion right that's it it's not yes. even that's it he's got yes. he's got the world championship isn't that yeah, crazy I thing about it's crazy if they had the best car in 2014 2015 or 2016 he right. is the world champion yeah. Probably 2017. Yeah. If it wasn't for the Merck dominance, if that Renault power unit wasn't shit. Yeah. We're talking about a three time world. We're talking about an Alonzo level driver. Yeah. Probably more of a Vettel, probably more of a Vettel level driver because he, he seems to have fallen off, but. And he's streaky. Maybe he's like he was. He's a streaky guy. So yeah, well, he just 17th. well, he just his his peak was not yeah. long. Thank us. We wanted to take a second to let you know about our new sponsor, Everyman Jack. Everyman Jack is the OG clean men's care brand. Body wash, shampoo, deodorant, skin care, beard care. They have everything you need to get fresh and not terrify women or anyone that you're talking to. All of their products have naturally derived ingredients with no harsh chemicals. Also, they smell great. All of their scents are outdoor inspired. They've got signature, they've got signature scents like cedarwood and sandalwood, plus a new one 
like Pacific Cypress and coconut and vanilla. Now I can pretend to be outdoorsy even though I never leave my couch and I live in New York City. I'm a city kid, but sometimes I wanna feel like I was raised in the woods and every man jack gets that done for me. And the best part is how affordable they are. There's no need to spend over $10 for body wash and deodorant when you can get something incredible for less than that with every man jack. I love their deodorant and their body wash. I feel clean and I smell like I'm a freaking woodsman. And it's making my girlfriend very happy. She loves it and so do I. Give Everyman Jack a shot today and go to everymanjack.com and use the code REDFLAGS at checkout for 25% off your first order. That's everymanjack.com's code REDFLAGS, plural, at checkout for 25% off your first order. Now in 17 and 18, this is when they get the full seasons together, Max and Danny. And and there was some stats from this that I that I'll, I'll give Aldis kind of compiled some stats from this. In those two seasons, they competed in 41 races together in 17 and 18. Of races where they both finished the race, 13 to 5 favoring Max in terms oh, of Jesus. like Max had 13 more than Danny. Um, but however, this is what's crazy. Of the 41 races, they only finished 18 of them together because that's how fucking shit their engine was. <laughs> that's how bad this Renault engine was. And in and in those 41 races, Danny had 12 DNFs from just because the engine sucked. Max had seven DNFs from just the engine sucking. And then when it came to qualifying, Max had 28 to 12 um, over those 40 some races out qualifying Daniel. So, you know, the writing was maybe in, on the roll. He meets him in seven. He, be, he beats him in 17, but this is, he's new kid on the block. He's fast as shit. And this is when we're getting, you could talk about Lando. This is when we're getting into like Lando Oscar kind of, you know, Lando is Mr. Golden boy, Mr. You know, everyone loves him. He's so charming, blah, blah, blah. And then they bring in this kid and now all of a sudden he's starting. But also to I think Lando could have won the world. I mean, people could, I mean, if this plays out the same way, people could say, well, if, McLaren was better earlier, and right. if Oscar hadn't come in when he came in, right. he's a world champion. I mean, it's totally. kind of like it's the same thing. No, the similarities are so real. Um, and I think it, I think it's interesting when you think about like how chummy Max and Daniel are now. Like that was real. There was real rivalry there. There was. I, it wasn't. I really all... don't think. I really don't think. It seems like. Max and Daniel. I don't think Daniel ever had anything against Max. I think he had any. I think all of his ire was really towards Red Bull. Red Bull, power not be. for not uh, backing. Totally, him. but I think I think ultimately I think and that's a, actually a testament to Danny that he can like compartmentalize. See past that, I mean, he's the like, master at, of compartmentalization. I think he. <laughs> but like at one point, um, like Max crashed into Danny in Hungary. He, he, you know, they they crashed twice in 2018, I believe. And in Hungary, he crashed into Danny, and he was like, "Is that who I thought it was?" And they were like, "Yes." And he goes, "Sore loser." So it wasn't just, you know, there was it wasn't just like all chummy. Like when when Max is throwing kind of like wild moves and and crashing into Ricardo, this is like there's a real there's a power struggle here, and Max is winning it, and and. And ultimately, I I think you're right. The, the the real betrayal was with the team, but you know it wasn't just all cutesy between them the whole time. Is kind yeah. of my point. I think it's easy yeah. to think of them as just like you see all the cuts of them on the plane and them partying and them doing the whatever, and it's all chummy chummy. But like there was some real moments of tension there. Yeah, I mean to quote Tony Soprano, I mean he's feeling really bad because. What kind of person can I be where his own mother wants him dead? Right. That's how he's feeling at Red Bull. And it all kind of culminates. It's so crazy because, like, Baku really was the th – that was the moment. That was really yeah. the tipping point. Yeah. That race I, – I went back and kind of, like, did some digging on that. That race – if we were doing this podcast in 2018 – I want to go back in time just to do recap of that race. Just to pretend pretend we're just in 2016. Honestly, it wouldn't be a person. bad Patreon episode. But like, dude, okay. This this race. Lap one, Raikkonen crashes out Ocon. 
Perfect. Just carnage, already, carnage already, immediately. Already my favorite race. Raikkonen doesn't have damage. Co Ocon's race is fucked. Perfect. Perfect. Max and Ricardo, they're fighting for fourth and fifth. They're like not even really like making a case to win the race, or or you know, they're like it's just the two of them fucking battling. Ricardo's behind Max. He goes. He tries to pass him. Max is defending. He finally he gets past him, but then Max comes in. Does like no no no, no you don't. They bang wheels. Then he's on he's on him again. Max throws it up the inside, like almost pushing Danny off track. Then, but then finally Daniel does get past him. He gets past him. Then they do the undercut. Daniel goes in first. He gets the preferential strategy, but the preferential strategy isn't actually good. So he comes out behind Max, and there's like 11 laps to go. And he's like, "What are we doing? Like, are you gonna make me kill myself to get past this kid again?" And they're like, "Yes, we are. We are going to do that." So he's trying, and this is when the famous. Thing happened. He dummies Max to the outside. Max starts to go for it. He comes back to the middle. Max does maybe moves under braking. The classic Max. It, it move. looked pretty bad. It looks pretty. It looks pretty, it bad. pretty bad. They have a big crash. Obviously, this is that's like this is the epic crash. But then after that crash, Botas is leading the race during the safety car. From that crash, Grosjean crashes during the safety car. Warming up his tires, grows. Oh, I crashes. remember that. I remember <laughs> yes. that from DTS. Yes. yes. They restart the lap. They restart the race with three laps to go. Bottas starts the, like, the restart, kind of ca catches Vettel, uh, you know, off guard. off guard. Hamilton's right behind him. But then Vettel does this crazy dive into turn one and just completely white spots his tires, you know, flat spots his tires yeah. and just, like, smoke everywhere goes off track through goes Hamilton Raikkonen Raikkonen and Perez so it's Botas is weeding the race then Botas Perez loves him some Baku doesn't he He loves him some <laughs> even then he loved him some Baku <laughs> per, then Botas gets a puncture so Botas on with three laps to go because of the remnants of all these fucking crashes there's just a piece of shrapnel on the ground gets a puncture and doesn't finish the race so Hamilton wins Kimi gets second Perez third and the Max and Danny stuff happened. So like, th this is like maybe, maybe, maybe the, the greatest race of all time. time. Yeah. <laughs> maybe the greatest race of all time. Um, and it had sort of these seismic implications. Franz Ferdinand getting shot in by Serbian nationalists. Uh, it, it dictated much of what formula one was to come for the next, you know, this was 2018. So the next six years, this is the red wedding. It is the it's fully <laughs> dude. It was the red wedding. Uh, yeah, it's the fucking red wedding. Because afterwards, they basically they made them both apologize, and they didn't really like. Even though, I'm actually kind of unclear as to fully who's to play. It seemed like they were both just like going full tilt. It was just like but it was. It doesn't a really matter back. whose fault it is. What really matters is that Daniel felt that it wasn't yes. his fault, right? And that they were siding with Max. Yes. And that he could see the writing in the wall. And then it seems like, according to some people, it seems like Daniel was leery of a few things. He was obviously most leery of what was happening with Max. He was leery of the Honda power units, right. which with Alonzo were terrible in McLaren. Yes. So he was leery of Honda. And... Um, and he had more faith in those Renault engines, which I don't know why he would do which that. Which plagued him. Which plagued him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, when you think about how much shit he went through right? with Renault. Because of the engines. Because of the engines. I guess the devil know. you know is better than the devil you don't. Also, Marco came out swinging like a week ago saying that they offered him like similar money. I think they offered him like... Well, what they said, I think people on Ricardo say Marcos, like, who fucking but I think take everything what, Marcos what they've said assault. is that they offered them the same deal. What they said is that they offered them the same deal. And I, and I watched, there's a clip of Marco after Baku 2018, where he's like, we, you know, this is how we, they're like, why didn't you do team orders? Should you do team orders? And he goes, that's it gets against our philosophy. We have two, we don't have a number. We don't have number one drivers. We have two. So he was the OG drivers. Zach Brown. He was OG Zach Brown, which we yeah. also know like immediately after this, there was a number one driver. <laughs> like this is what they, they do. Team like they're now they are the poster 
children for like, yeah, we do fucking team orders. So that philosophy right. after yeah, Daniel but the, the, was but, discarded. But they saw Daniel as a different level of an asset to check up. For sure, for sure. They probably didn't want to um, lose Daniel. And Gasly and Albon and now Checo. Yeah. But yeah, they didn't want to lose Daniel because they, you know, people were like, this is the best to drive. This is the best driver lineup on the grid. These two are, are beasts. From a pace and marketing perspective, it was incredible. Yes. From a numbers. Yeah. So, and, and Daniel even said, um, I listened to an interview where he said, like, after Baku, he was like, he kind of made the decision that he wasn't going to stay there. Like, that that was it. But then he won Monaco, and then he was like, am I really thinking that? I think he said that. He was like, so then, but then I win Monaco after that, and I'm like, am I really doing this? But I when think, he wins Monaco down on power. Down on power. That was also yeah, yeah, the that engine was later that, that shit season. itself, and he had to win it all by himself. Like, and, yeah, and what's interesting, still you know, going we, with Renault. Ah, crazy. It's crazy he went with Renault. <sighs> but, you know, as well, Tony Soprano. See, he had offers from McLaren and Renault. He had, offered from, he had an offer from McLaren. But he yeah, didn't have an offer better from off. Mercedes. He's probably better off that he went to Renault for those first two years and didn't have to deal with Lando. Put off Lando. Yeah, or maybe he would have gotten a more of a warming up period. Yeah, he might have gotten more in there and not just like been saddled with a new car. Like he might have been there there for the, from the jump. People say that he should have never went to Renault. To that, I will counter with Tony Sobrano. A wrong decision is better than indecision. Okay. First of all, there's that. I mean, I think he might regret. He might regret that decision. In the sense, like based on his like later actions, because yeah. he had that. Remember that bald manager he had, that bald agent he had in Drivers Club. Like that uh-huh. agent is so fired. <laughs> that agent totally. is dead as a doornail, and he's yeah. with CAA now. It's like he's like, all right, I need a real, I need like a real fucking company representing me. Right, right. And so that sort of to me leads me to suspect that maybe he feels like he was mismanaged. Um, yeah. that Renault was a bad move. Although I don't, he did well at Renault. He beat Hulkenberg. Right. He finished fifth in the standings. That was a, um, no, his decent... stock was still high. They're like, this... this is a great driver in a bad situation. I don't think Renault, honestly, Renault was not a bad move to me. He was not going to He max. He was never going to beat max. Right. From a, from a skill or political standpoint that was over and honestly the move to to mclaren was a good move and it was also a good move it was a great move it's just that he fucking he just didn't that's when it that's really when the you know he he was like king midas in reverse here everything he touches turns to shit tony soprano yes i love this the thematic string of tony you know being on this podcast is a lot like uh taking a shit yeah, exactly. Um, a grown man made a wager. He lost. He made another one. He lost again. End of story. <laughs> that's that's fucking Daniel Ricardo. That is I mean, Daniel Ricardo. Think about it. Think about think about it. I know. Imagine if he had gotten on top of Daniel uh, Lando Norris. I know. Now he's in the championship hunt. Now he and guess what? He's and guess getting what? There's the revenge no, and, on and Max right no, now. There's no Oscar Piastri There's either. No Oscar they probably Piastri. are keeping Lando. Oscar Piastri is, is in at a Alpine. Suit in Alpine. Oscar. Dude. Oh, it's so brutal. Oscar it is in really Alpine, is and Daniel Ricciardo is taking it to his old nemesis, Red Bull. He's getting in wheel to wheel battles with Max. Max and you know what's so funny? We talk, you know, one of, one of you know, your knocks on Lando is that, like, he doesn't win 50 50 races but like when he's won he's 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 shown that he can dominate if he gets out in front yes and he's shown that he can he has insane amounts of speed with clean air and no one else around him that's right now kind of undisputed what is up for debate is whether in a in a fucking dog fight fight for a knife in the mud as uh you know what's his name from succession said uh, Brian Cox in Succession said, "He goes, it's it's a fight for a knife in the mud. That's what life is. 
in the fight for the knife in the mud, does he come out with that fucking knife? And but all of Ricardo's wins, like every single one of his wins, were that because he was never including like, Monza and McLaren. That was a that was the week. There was yes. one week where they could win, and he was like, "It's mine." Fuck you, right? Bitch. And I think that was also like part of it. Was like he when when the moment really presented himself, he always like stood like stepped up to the plate. He could always like churn it out when. When the when the when he could find the golden snitch, oh, there's yeah. that motherfucker. And he yeah. caught that shit. Even in Red Bull, even at RB, he like, oh, we we got some pace in Mexico. P four, right. right? Oh, I, th- I forgot when he. I think he put it. Did, he qualified like third or fourth this year. When did he do yeah. that? Just randomly when they're fast. Right. He's like, he's like, he's still he's he, he just can't do it every week. But he's still like elite. Yeah, because he doesn't have that kind of like cyborgy thing that I think you kind of need in this world. You need that just. He's not metronomic, like a right. metronome, like over and over and over again. No, he, he can has get to in a like, pocket and do it. What am I every getting up? Again. What am I getting up for? <laughs> like, he needs a real carrot. in front of him, which is what he's talked about. He's like, I don't want to be. And, and I think this is why, you know, who knows what. There's a possibility you never say never, but it seems like he's this is it. He's done. But he had a real carrot, Brian. After McLaren. He did. He, he gets did. he gets moved. And it's like all you gotta do I know is demolish Yuki Sonoda, which is obviously not it's a close to which impossible task. Impo- it's an impossible, impossible task. Beat. He was actually yeah, asked yeah. to do the impossible task. Oh, you got it, but he was given a mandate. Beat Yuki Sonoda and the Red Bull seat is yours. Yeah. Give us an excuse to fire Paris. Right. And uh, he just, um, he couldn't do it. I think So it's not I, like know, he had a, what am right. I racing for? I think that those years probably took a lot out of him. And I also think, you know, he's a brand. He's a business owner. We're rocking the fucking hot shit. You know, he's, I don't know if you've heard, but he's a business owner. Um, I think the demands of that, especially post Red Bull when he's like not in a championship winning car. No, there's no even chance of that, but that's immediately as his stock is as a celebrity and as a, you know, public figure that's rising. So it's like there's inverse graphs and then the demands on you are just higher and higher. You're making more and more money. You're setting up your life outside of this thing more and more. You know, our first episode the title was Ricardo or second episode, I think was Ricardo has too much to live for. The guy has a lot to live for. He's like got a full life and, and, and his life post formula one will be better than 99% of these guys in terms of like, it, it, it's like when you're single, have. when you're yeah. single or my girlfriend goes away for a long time, I just get in better shape. I'm skinnier. I go to the gym more. I yes. work harder. I'm just more motivated. You're more motivated Dude, when you when the Catherine's been gone for two weeks. I've been getting shredded. She gets here <laughs> yesterday, gets in from the airport, immediately is like, "I want to order Taco Bell," and I was like, "God damn you!" <laughs> it begins. Orders orders Taco Bell, and I'm like, "It doesn't come with the the right sauce," so she's all mad. And then I'm like, "It's just sitting there," so I'm like, oh, "I'm not gonna. What am I not gonna have a some the quesadilla? Am I not gonna have this taco? We're gonna right waste now? it." Then today she comes in from lunch and she goes, I got a Philly cheesesteak if you want any. And I was like, God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to get hot. <laughs> no, I totally, I mean, I mean, it's like when you're, when you're a young, single, right. incel of a man, yeah. it's just a different energy than when you're rich and older and successful. Yeah, it's, it's harder. It's it's harder to to keep. That's why Alonso is still great, is because he still yes. has that yes. crazy incel energy yes. that he had yes, when yes, he was yes. young, which is also because he got electrocuted and, and uh, you know lost <laughs> his memory. Um, no, uh, that's why Alonso is an anomaly. I mean, it just it's harder as you get older. That's just that that happens too. Like you 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 get older, it's harder to hit the fastball. You know, I remember David Wright. Remember David Wright on the Mets. Third baseman? Yeah. Yeah. What's up, Vankers? We have to talk to you about our newest sponsor, Dollar Shave Club. 
You've heard them. You've seen them. But have you worked with them? Because I'm going to tell you, I thought the Dollar Shave Club just made razors, but they do so much more. Whether you're going for a smooth shave or just maintaining a beard, Dollar Shave Club offers shave and grooming products that are always high quality but never overpriced. You're going to want to try their top sellers, which includes the Club Series 6 Blade Razor, which isn't just any razor. It's a vacation for your punum. With six stainless steel blades and a vitamin E infused lubricant strip, this razor delivers the closest, most comfortable shave imaginable. You will have a face like a baby's bottom, as my booba used to say. Also, if you're a hairy guy like me, the precision trimmer is perfect. It gets to all those hard to reach areas, the nose, the ear. You don't wanna have hair going out of there. And that's where the precision trimmer comes in handy. You never get nicked, always leaves you clean and handsome. It's really great, they ship it right to your door, but you can also now get it in retail, but you don't have to take our word for it, okay? You can try Dollar Shave Club products, which are now available everywhere. So you can order them on their website, Amazon, or get them at your favorite retailer near you. You can also visit their site right now for 20% off, $20 or more, and get your products delivered right to your door. Just visit dollarshaveclub.com slash red flags and use promo code red flags for 20% off, $20 or more. And remember, however you shave, Dollar Shave Club is here to help you stay handsome. David Wright used to get, he was, you know, young, like hot shot third baseman for the Mets. He was like our best player for a few years there. Towards the end of his career, he would get to the, to the stadium like five hours before the game because his knees were so fucked up, his back was so fucked up that he had like a five-hour pre-game routine just to be able to play the game that probably for the first 10 years of his career he could roll out of bed and just be dominant i mean lebron lebron used to eat mcdonald's before a game right now he's like got now he's on all this hell shit he's in fucking cryo yes. cryo <laughs> chambers spending right. two million dollars a week on his fucking body yeah and i think it's interesting for danny like oh, when you cut expectations well, they're the, they're the thief of joy, and they will make you – they'll fuck you up because if you come in to a thing thinking I'm going to be the guy, I'm going to be number one, I'm going to you – know, you have a pie-eyed view. You know, his – this is also what was, I think, so upsetting for so many fans. He was – we were introduced to him as he's the guy. But I think – but I think our attraction to him is similar to, like, your attraction to Lando, which is, like, the nice guy can finish first. Right. And it's like, nope, Jon Snow, Jon Snow. Yeah, right, right, right. Fucking stabbed uh, Richard <laughs> Richard Stark or Richard Madden. Who's Richard? Which one's Richard Madden? Yeah, Richard yeah, Madden, one, Red of Wedding. Yes, one of the Starks. Yeah, one of the Oh, you married for love? Fuck you, dead. <laughs> yeah, idiot, married for love right. like an idiot. Now watch. Now you're dead, and your pregnant wife is fucking stabbed to death. Yeah, it's just like Game of Thrones, man. Now we're now we're waiting to see if 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 nice guys can finish first in terms of Lando Norris. This was an important reminder to me, given that given my emotional investment in Lando, and that conversation we had on a few pods ago, just like how mercenary this business is, how like, it, you know, even what? from it's like Daniel was the new kid on the block, then Kvyat, then Max. You know, they just eat each other. It's Pac-Man, and they just eat each other. And someone and, will eat Max at some point, or Max will and leave. And someone will eat. And, and and ideally, that happens when you kind of get older, and it's just like, all right, well, you had your run. But it's just, it's it's brutal when it happens when you're young. Right. And that's maybe what's, like, upsetting to me about the Lando thing, is I'm like, wait, he's he's 24. Yeah, Michael got, like, Michael Schumacher got eaten by... um. Alonso and, and Raikkonen. Fucking, well, they brought Raikkonen in. They wanted right. Raikkonen in to replace him but yes. um but think about like lewis kind of got eaten because they didn't want to give him a long-term deal at mercedes totally so, so right he got eaten by fucking antonelli before he even sat stepped foot in the fucking car and right. i think and Anton and george russell looks like he's gotten eaten he's gonna get eaten before he had a chance to eat hamilton right. and but i want to push back on this on this I, this narrative now i i i i, I will agree yeah. i will totally agree that that red bull bungled this goodbye Mm -hmm. that 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 was just uh they dropped the ball right giving him a send-off and yeah, all yeah, these yeah. danny rick fans 
are rightfully upset and shitting all over Red Bull. But, Brian, tell me I'm crazy. Do we need to measure some of our anger? They fucking rescued him off the scrap heap when nobody wanted him. They gave him a chance. Totally. They're like, we didn't get to say goodbye. I'm like, McLaren fired him. (laughs) Paid, paid him, him to go $20 away. Million dollars. Paid yeah. him $20 million to go away. But they were like, well, at least they, they, they gave us chances to grieve. Like, they fired him. They fired right. him. Right. I mean, they had, I'm not mad. I mean, McLaren, they, he wasn't performing up to expectations. Um, and right. they're looking pretty vindicated in their decision to hire Oscar Piastri. But they fired yeah, yeah. him. You were going to get no more Daniel Ricciardo. Right. Christian, I mean, from Christian Horner and Helmut Marco's perspective, <laughs> this guy fucking dumped them. Right for Renault, yeah, and then they and then he, him they back. saw him at the unemployment they saw him at the unemployment office and they were like, "What are you doing over here?" Come it's in. so funny. It's so funny. <laughs> you know, it's um. I just watched this crazy documentary about Vince McMahon. I'm watching it right now. It's so fucking nuts. It's yes. Oh, I sold. I by the way, I know a lot about that. I sold a TV show to YouTube Premium, and then YouTube Premium stopped to be a thing. But I saw the yes. whole TV show about the Monday Night about Wars. About this issue. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but Vince McMahon, um, sexual misconduct stuff aside, um, what was so interesting about him is that he these guys would, like, fuck him over, mm-hmm. leave him, stab him in the back, mm-hmm. and then come crawling back, mm-hmm. and he would hire them. Now, he'd probably make their lives miserable and this and that, but, like, Vince McMahon would always be like... They, Eric Bischoff, the guy who tried to assassinate him in the Monday Night Wars, yeah, ended up working for the WWF. And Vince McMahon was like, "Why? yeah, why wouldn't I hire... It would be, it's a great storyline that I hire the guy that tried to kill me. You right, know what I mean? Right, right. <laughs> yeah. It's like... So they did the Vince McMahon thing, which was like, it would be good for business if we brought this guy back. It would, right. Think of the storylines. It was a great storyline Vince McMahon move. And you think that they wanted this to happen? Don't you think they wanted him to... Do you think they were happy that... Like, oh, with Yuki Sonoda, yeah. this guy that we're doing absolutely nothing with. That this we have guy no that's intentions just, with. They have no... They were dying for Daniel to kill him. I know. They wanted... They have they they're like please somebody kill this guy, <laughs> and Yuki Sonoda is just like Uma Thurman, just fucking. They're sending the crazy aids <laughs> at him, and he's just fucking, yeah, with his with his Hanzo sword, just fucking killing all of them. Yeah, they wanted they, they wanted an excuse to yank Checo. Yeah, and they just and the only I mean Daniel was the only person that would make sense to get like in terms of numbers right. in terms of marketing. Checo's the only person you could really compete with. He feels like a like a like a like a like a good swap, right? From a marketing numbers, so they want like they wanted they wanted that so badly. Now I also think he's victim. I I think they're so dis- disheveled and disorganized over there. I think that Christian wants Daniel, yes, and Marco Helmet. is like all about the next young yes. guy. He's like. I don't think Marco really wanted Daniel at all. Like I think once I think once Daniel left, Marco was like, "All right, I'm done with you." Marco, I think Marco is like he, Bob Dylan. He doesn't want to go backwards. He's like, right. "I already, I, 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 like, yeah." Apparently, like if you ask Daniel, like, like, like apparently we had a teacher that loved Bob Dylan, and it's like yeah. you ask Bob Dylan to play like an old hit, he'll play it, but he'll sing it in a completely weird, different right. way because he's not <laughs> interested. Yeah, playing the answer, my friend. He's not interested in playing "Blowing in the Wind." He's like, "That's that was forty years ago." I, I'm, I'm fucking right. with electric. I'm on this new tip. It's like, have now. you heard my Christmas album? Have you heard my Christmas album? So Liam Lawson Hel- is singing on it. It's Helmet <laughs> Marco is like Dan Ricardo was so 2014. Stop asking me to play my old hits. Yeah, stop trying to make fetch Daniel Ricardo. Liam hat. Lawson is like his new hit. Yeah. He doesn't get any fucking return on his imbe- like it doesn't get him off right, to watch right, Daniel right. Ricardo succeed again. He wants to watch Liam succeed. Right. So now I think that Liam getting in is a sign that maybe in this like satellite battles, because these are like Checo is a fucking mm-hmm. Christian satellite, Daniel's a Christian satellite. Yeah. I think Yuki is honestly a helmet satellite. I think helmet 
likes Yuki. Right. And I think, and I think Liam, I think Helmut likes Liam. So I think Liam getting pushed in is a sign of well, there's a, Helmut there's getting some of, points on the board. Right. And, but there's also, you know, this, this hole was plugged for a while and now there is, it's kind of like the, the bark can regrow on the tree. And I think it's like, it's sad to people that like Daniel's story had to be a part of that transition, but it it, it comes for everybody. It happens for everyone, but it's, it's, there's movement again. It's not just still waters. And I think that is ultimately maybe long-term. That's a good thing. And um, I think that, and I think he, he like, we haven't seen the last of him. Would it have been, I mean, it's like, okay, would it have been better if he kept going at V carb and we got to see him continue to finish P 13. Like, I know, no. And I don't think, I think the reality of like people were, were really upset about the, how the whole thing was handled. And I think honestly, I feel like everyone was kind of resigned to the fact that like his story was his, his world championship story was over. He wasn't going to make it on the Red Bull squad and that his F one story was kind of over. I think, what people longed for was just like a kind of the ceremony of it. I watched the Federer documentary. There's a Federer documentary yeah. on um on Amazon. And it's all about like him deciding to retire the 12 like the the couple of weeks before Federer did this start of this tournament which is the basically like the Ryder Cup for tennis where it's like the Europe versus the rest of the world. So it's like the, all the European players are on one it's so you finally get to like play together. And really what it was, like he started it and it was really like a kind of last hurrah for them all to kind of have. He's there with Rafa. He's there with Andy Murray, who honestly, Andy Murray, kind of a Daniel Ricciardo-esque figure, just kind he of- steals the show? No, but he was, he was just kind of wrong place, wrong time. Like he, had Rafa and Federer not been there, he would have been- a multi, he would have won so many Grand Slams, but he only won two. There's guys like, like, like Roddick is another one of those guys. Roddick is another one of those guys. You just right. like you're you're among these other killers. Now it's 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 different from F1 because of the car element, but there was this. It was really you saw these guys get to really have like he and Rafa played doubles together for for Federer's last match, and he was like, I know I'm going to lose my knees fucked, but, and then they almost win. They like, it comes down to a tie break at the end and they almost win. And he has like a couple of like amazing points. And I was like, I was, it was really touching and beautiful. Now he's a goat. He's a legend. He's a la Lewis. But I think Daniel meant so much to so many people, especially the newer fans and the ceremony of him and the, and, and everything that this sport is about that's off track that he, represents and gave people and i think it yeah there's just the kind of like there's a bitter aftertaste of the kind of he's he's in the press saying like yeah i think this is it but everyone in the paddock knows then two days later they yeah, but come there out was saying outrage that, from his but brian there was outrage from his fans about ed mclaren for like firing him it's like yeah yeah i understand but that doesn't mean that because people are outraged for you can't just lump in. Well, if anyone's outraged, well, you don't, you you don't count. It's a little boy that cried wolf for me. Cause it's like, okay, you were angry when he was being really outclassed by Lando and they moved on from him. Right. Right. But I think even the not Danny Rick psychos were like, what the fuck was that? That's, you true. know what I mean? That's, That's what I'm saying. That's true. Pe stands in this world are crazy always. And you can, you can have take everything that they do with certain grains of salt. But like when I he got this fastest like, lap, Right. Everyone was like, that's revenge. Yeah. And I was like, <laughs> revenge for what? Like, right. You think that you think that Zach Brown wanted to fire Daniel Ricardo. Right. He, he wanted Daniel to succeed. Yeah. You think he paid him $20 million to leave and was like, oh, fuck. Yeah. Hell yeah. I'm yeah. awesome. This is awesome. No. No, it's a brutal, it, and it's just like that's the reality of this world is that it's brutal. It's what have you done for me lately? You don't give you. There's not a ton of time for you to figure your shit out. And I think especially for Daniel, having been, having shown pace for so long, having two full years of McLaren to figure it out, 
and not really ever getting there besides the win in Monza. Like, that's what this world is. It's a mercenary, cutthroat, dog-eat-dog world. And he's at the center of it being like this, like, <laughs> sweetie. And well, I think it, it does. It, beg it begs the question of, like, yeah, c can nice guys finish first in this world? I mean, we talk about Nico. It's like Nico Rosberg had to, like, murder himself to beat Lewis. Yeah. And I think Daniel, on some to some extent, you know, they say like the honey badger, right? He's like the honey badger. Why he's the honey badger is that they look all cute and cuddly, but then they rip your head off. And I think after a while, we just kind of got the cute and cuddly with him. And when he was younger, he maybe had more of that bite, but the bite kind of, those teeth started to dull down. Well, for whatever reason, for reasons we can't really explain whether he was a driver that only gelled with a certain type of car yeah, or he lost his edge. It's hard to know. I'm not a driver coach. I can't look at his telemetry and figure that out, but somewhere along the way he lost it. Yeah. And that's like terrifying. Mm -hmm. That's like terrifying that <laughs> one day you're hot shit in this sport. And the next day it's like, it's like, it's literally like space jam. Right. D d these it it's like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. They lose I their zapped, powers. Right. I zapped my shit away. Like some aliens come down and they take their powers. Mm-hmm. And those aliens are like the new kids that just come in. Or you think a guy's good and then Franco Calapinto comes in and it's like actually <laughs> Albon's mm -hmm. not good. Mm-hmm. It's just how scary, how like quickly a narrative can turn on a guy or and let's remember he beat the shit out of Nico Hulkenberg and ran him out of the sport. Now Nico Hulkenberg is like bell of the ball a little bit. Yeah. But then Ollie Berman came in in one week and we're like, wait a minute, is he the bell right. of the ball? Cause Ollie Berman right. yeah, yeah, yeah. him. So it's like, it's so hard. No, it's a snake that guys. chained that, that, that sheds its skin like on the, like this. And that's where like the Alonso's of this world and the guys that can like stick around and continue to perform at such a high level. That's where Lewis is like, I mean, Lewis's career is so unbelievably impressive for, for consist, just the consistency. I mean, think about his first couple of teammates. He had Alonzo, he had, well, there was Kovalainen who wasn't great. I don't think. And then there was button. Mm -hmm. He lost the button, button is, at one point. He lost. Yeah. He lost one year to button. Yeah. Vanka's not only does Cash App sponsor our favorite perfectly branded Formula One team, but they also make it easier for you to save money so you can do things that you love, like going to an F1 race, boobies. Listen, to be honest, we thought that Cash App is just a way to send people money, right? You just send people money. Hey, Cash App me. Okay, I got you. But actually, it's a faster and simpler way to bank. You can start saving with as little as $1 with no hidden fees, no minimum balance requirements, and no account fees. Minimum balance requirements is crazy. It's just like, let me live. And Cash App lets you do that. And we all know that overdraft fees make no sense. Why are you charging someone if they don't have any money? Plus, when you deposit $300 or more in paychecks, you can get up to $50 in free overdraft coverage. It pays to get paid on Cash App. So go download the app today. Now back to the show. So what 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 do you think his legacy is going to be? I mean, it's... I don't know. I think his legacy is going to be someone who is... I'm trying to think of like the best example. Yeah. I'm trying to think of like a guy who's like, who's like an athlete that's in, in, in other sports. That's just like way more popular. That was like good for a few years, but, but then his popularity just like kind of, well, this is, a, I, I was thinking about like the championship aspect of it. Like Charles Barkley never won a championship. Yeah. But Charles Barkley was a fucking, was but he was a MVP a level. For, yeah. Guy. Yeah. Yeah. But I feel like Ricardo kind of fits a little bit in that category. He but wasn't was as Charles dominant Barkley for as long, as but the knock on him, the knock on him wasn't that he like the knock on him was like he couldn't win a championship. Like he never he never got a championship. And I think that's yeah. the thing that can haunt you in sport is like, did you ever that's yeah. it haunted A Rod for years. A Rod was better than Jeter, but Jeter had all the rings and A Rod didn't, you know? Yeah, that's true. But was and Barkley as for, popular? You know, but here's the thing is Barkley had popular. like 
DR had like Jordan level popularity despite not being Jordan, Jordan. Le- like his popularity. Yeah. I think Barkley was kind of that guy. I mean, Derek Rose just retired. They, they announced their retirement on the same day. Derek Rose, like kind of another guy who was great MVP. Got was hurt. like in his flashes was like, yeah. this is the best player yeah. in the league. Yeah. And then kind of a, a, a sharp decline post injuries. Yeah. And never won a championship. There's lots of similarities to this in sport. I think that Daniel is unique in that he was in certain ways, almost bigger than the sport for a, for a bit there. Like I met with a guy who did PR and this is when Daniel was like stinking it up in McLaren. And he was, he was telling me like, I, I get the most press. He worked, the guy who worked in PR worked for F1 in some capacity. I don't really remember how, but he was like, Daniel is the most requested driver that we have. And this was when he was like getting trounced by Lando because he was just, he's that, Big. I kind of feel like what's actually kind of exciting for him potentially is that I think that the rest is still unwritten vibes. <laughs> I don't think like, we've ever he, seen a drive like an athlete. Mm, Connor saying Ken Griffin, Ken Griffey Jr. But Ken Griffey Jr. was like one of the best to ever like he was the best to ever do it for a couple of years. But that's what I think, you know, 14, 15, 16, Daniel was maybe like had those that Ken Griffey few seasons. He's on the cover of the video game. That's, He's the guy. But he, you know what I mean? That's true. That's a good point. I think he maybe, yeah, it wasn't as long or as, you know, it's it's different in the NBA. <laughs> I guess I'm having trouble because I'm like, I was like, Ken Griffey Jr. was a freak athlete. <laughs> <laughs> None of these guys are freak athletes, okay? Right. No, Ken Griffey Jr. was like great for like a yes. few years. Yeah, he was it was he was on the cover of the, all the video games. Wasn't it Ken Griffey had his own video game, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah, that was kind of Yeah, but now when you think about Ken Griffey now, people don't really talk about Ken Griffey because he was kind of hot in his moment, but then he never really got goat status a la, you know, all those guys. If Lando Norris bottles then, this championship and then Oscar Piastri takes over, it's going to be the exact thing. It's going to be the exact same story. Totally. Totally. They're gonna be. They're gonna have the exact same narrative. They very well might. Yeah. Um, I know. Godin was the top driver at McLaren when they were shit. Yeah. And then by the time they got good, another guy showed up. Yep. You know, got on top of him for the first year, year and a half, two years, but yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. year three, not looking too good. Now the writing's on the wall. Maybe he leaves. Maybe he leaves. But the thing with F1 is that, like, there is a timing element of this thing. And in a way that Bas, you know, I mean, I think with uh, you can be on bad teams. Ken Griffey was with the Mariners. They were fucking nowhere. You know, A-Rod was with the Mariners as well, wasn't he? They were kind of nowhere when Jeter's at the Yankees and they, you know. But I think you, there's a little bit more. You can take the, You can take your fate into your own hands a little bit more. In these yeah, other it's sports. Interesting. It's interesting to think about this. Because, like, Lewis was the best. Mm-hmm. He, yes, it's a lot of it is choice-based. Um, He was choosing in, I want to say, 2014, was it? 2013. 2013. He, he was choosing he went in 2013. There in 2013, yeah. yeah. In 2013, he was choosing between Red Bull and Mercedes. Mm-hmm. So whichever way he chose, he's probably at least a five-time world champion, which is kind of interesting to think about. Mm. Like, so if you're that good, like, you're going to choose between good teams and you'll, like, it'll work out probably unless you're Fernando Alonso. Yeah. Hey, Fernando Alonso. Alonso Alonso really just... Ch- chose wrong every time it feels time. like yeah i mean i think like we saw what he did with vettel right and had it been a few years earlier he maybe he wins those four you know maybe he's the guy he's winning those championships himself 
And then it's yeah. a different conversation. But that's what I think, you know, his impact goes beyond it. His impact goes beyond just being a world champion. And I think sport, you know, after I watched the Baku thing, they're talking to, you know, a few of them, Coltard and um, Eddie Jordan and this guy, they're talking to, to Christian. And Christian's obviously like pissed. He's pissed, like livid after the race because they crashed. But I think, I forget who said it. I think maybe Jordan said it. He was just like, I know it sucks right now, but this is going to be looked back on as like one of the greatest races of all time. And you will have been a part of that. And like, it, it's you're on the bad end of it. But sport, there's an, it's entertainment. There's entertainment element to sport. It's storylines. It's, you know, who is this person? Who is this guy? And I think like, Baby he faces gave, and heels. He is a baby face, baby. And that's, and that, yes. And I was watching this, the Vince McMahon documentary and so much, and they, it, no one understands that more than wrestling. Wrestling, that's what it is. It, it, it is purely playing off of that. And it's, you know, as humongous as it is. And like when Hulk Hogan was at the top and then like he, people were, you know, we needed to make him a hero and he beats Andre the Giant and he, and he slams him. And yeah. they even lie about it. They're like, he'd gone to the story had never way. been slammed. And they're yeah. like, yes, he had. They just lied because <laughs> it made a better story. Yeah. It made a better story. That's the problem with, that's the problem with, uh, that's the problem with uh, F1 and sports is sometimes it's the stories, the, the fairy, mm -hmm. sometimes you get the fairy tale ending. Yeah. It feels like you wanted him to get a championship. Yes. Felt like that was what was supposed to happen. He was supposed to, oh, he's going to get, He's going to show up at Renault. He's going to lead them to the front. Okay. Okay. It's going to be a longer, more right. Odyssean sort of route. Yeah. Okay. And McLaren, he'll, he'll get his shot at McLaren. No, that didn't work. Oh, wait a minute. He's going to go really it's, Now we're getting it. We, we keep getting, we keep edging towards <laughs> yeah. a satisfying conclusion. And it's just, well, you're wanting to like the, the, the the more intense bet to hit like it becomes the more unlikely it becomes the more like, like maybe it'll happen and then i'll win a million billion dollars it's the same thing with um fucking with uh lewis and the eighth right it's like people are hoping against hope that lewis can like go to ferrari and they're at the right place at the right time and he can win the eighth and it can be the storybook ending but it's life and sometimes it doesn't happen like that and i think daniel there's an opportunity that he has now where his impact can be a, can be more than just what happens on track, which which much of his impact is it is because it's not just his stat line. People love him because of his skills, his late breaking, his aggressive moves, and who he was and in his personality and all of that. And I think what we talked think on when we doing? interviewed him. What? What do you think he ends up doing? I don't know. I want to say I want like a part of me. I want him to do punditry. I want him to like be there on track and talk about it and be an ambassador for the sport. But yeah, maybe he does a podcast with us. Says Jenny. We add another. We add another uh, bill to our to our slate. Yeah, I think Dak um, Shepard might have the inside. I think track Dak, he, on that. Yeah, I mean, you know, I don't know the rest. Yeah, of, he I, did. It's up. <sighs> yeah, they tried yeah. him out with Will Arnett. That was a bumpy one. Yeah. I mean, we saw what it was like. What do you do with Tom Brady? Right. How do you even? Because here's the thing is like. You mean to tell me that Tom Brady is just going to go and do the same shit that all that a million other ex players are doing? Like, right, it doesn't right, feel right. it doesn't feel right that a player of yeah. Tom Brady's stature is going to step in and do what Tony Romo does. Like, what? He's. There, there should be a more senior position. There should be something cooler. Yeah. I remember Kobe, like, he didn't call games. He had, like, his own segment where he was, like, behind right. the mind of Kobe. Like, Kobe's like, yeah. I'm not calling games. Dwayne yeah, Wade yeah, does yeah. that. I'm better than fucking. I'm not, right. I'm not <laughs> showing up to places like Barkley and. With Reggie Miller. With Reggie Miller. I'm fucking three times a player that they were. I'm doing, like, yeah. my own thing where I'm, like, right. behind the game. Through my eyes. Well, there's also – it's hard with, with motorsport because it's so expensive. But, like, yeah, Federer started this this tournament that's going to maybe be played for, you know, the rest of time as long as there's a, you know, professional tennis league that, like, he, he could start his own that. team. Could start his own team. Well, I think – think about it. He should start his own – think – imagine him as, like, a Gunther Steiner of a team. Mm-hmm. 
But then you're interacting with the with the thing that killed. It's like this is what's fascinating. Then you're interact. Then you're having to be the person like chopping off heads, when you were the guy that like kind of got his head chopped off a few times. And do you really want to go there? Uh I think. I mean, he's EPing this show about F one. He's you know he's like. Yeah, maybe he he works towards bringing F one even more mainstream because that still f- hasn't fully happened. He can be that ambassador for the you sport, about, which is why he which is would why be- it feels cruel that he wasn't given that. Like, it's like if this like if he's gonna do so much for the sport, can the sport not give him some Brian love back? Brian, how much more successful would a Ricardo American F one team be than an oh Andretti? Well. <laughs> Who knows if there will be in it? He's stepping well, down. He's sold out. He's he's done. I know. This is for another episode, but yeah, I don't know. Dude, we'll, dude, we'll, IndyCar uh, is in right now is insane. There's like an FBI investigation. Yeah, into like Ray Hall Letterman and all this crazy dude, shit. Or he goes, dude, he should go to IndyCar. No, if he's going anywhere, it's NASCAR. He's a big NASCAR fan. He is a NASCAR guy. Yeah, maybe he doesn't ask. And these I mean, millionaires, he's, he's, he's these number millionaires, three because not, of fucking Dale Earnhardt. These millionaires, they're not so eager to fucking do the Indy 500. Yeah, it's true. Um, I All think, right, Vankas. Anything yeah. else? What are your final thoughts on DR? What are my final thoughts on DR? I mean, I don't clo- <laughs> I don't care how close you are in the end. Your friends are going to let you down. Family, they're the ones you can depend on. Man. Who's his family? Like we're we're his family. He should come on the us. On the... <laughs> That's right, us. Um, well, you know what it is. This is Daniel Ricardo's. This is this is Daniel Ricardo. This is this is his yeah. life. Yeah. You steer the ship the best way you know. Sometimes it's smooth. Sometimes you hit the rocks. In the meantime, you find your pleasures where you can. Dan Ricardo knows how to find his pleasures where he can. We know that. Mm-hmm. And I think whatever he does, he's going to find a way to enjoy it, whether it's punditry. Yeah. I, I wouldn't cry for Daniel Ricardo because I don't think Dan Ricardo is crying for himself. Mm-hmm. That guy doesn't, that doesn't, he doesn't look like, I know a self pitying type. Okay. I know one when I see one. That yeah. is not a guy who feels bad for himself. Don't you guys feel bad for him? I'm sure he's going, that is a guy who knows how to have fun. That is a guy. Mm-hmm. That I think maybe his big that was maybe his big problem was that he enjoyed life a right. little too much. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, when I think about him, I'm kind of like the really this other his impact post his time in F1 could be massive if he finds the thing that feels right for him that's in line with him, and that's up to him to figure out. But I feel like honestly, he could be. Massive, if not more impactful, post his time there than he was there. Hell if yeah. that's what he wants, or impactful, it's like, or just just live in Beverly, live Hills your life, and, and enjoy chill. enjoy your yeah. shit, enjoy yeah. your life. As we go on, we remember all the times we spend together. We love you, Danny. We love you, Danny. And we love you, Vanka. Bye, Vanka. Uh, oh, we got Susie Wolf on Vanka Hours on Thursday. Fucking tune in. Yeah, baby. Buy Ticket Store Show in Austin. Link in description. Yeah.